Um, I'm Chi. Uh, I'm the co-founder and uh, CEO of Kai. Um, and what Kai is doing is uh, uh, we are building the programmable, we call the programmable trust infrastructure uh, for the future of uh, agentic internet. And uh, what does that even mean, right? Um, let's go to the next one. First of all, yeah, we uh, actually uh, recently just closed a uh, Series A round led by uh, PayPal Ventures and uh, John Callis, uh, which bring our funding to 33 million, which is really uh, makes us feel excited and uh, have the uh, capital to really push for uh, the future agentic infrastructure. So why are we building for what Kai is building? Uh, first of all, we think uh, this uh, internet, the whole evolution of internet history has been going to, we call the third era of internet. Uh, starting from uh, 1995 around, uh, this is the, like, the, the starting of we call like the internet from the desktop based, uh, which is where uh, Google and all those uh, giants has been, uh, you know, like really taking off from that era. And then uh, fast forward to 15 years later, uh, we see a lot of uh, projects and uh, companies like uh, Facebook, Instagram, those uh, uh, WhatsApp all come from that uh, era and that is mobile based era. And uh, this year, 2025, is where we call, this is the era of uh, agentic internet. And what does that mean? It even mean is, first of all, uh, there are probably gonna be more agents than human uh, that's run on internet on behalf of uh, businesses or individuals. And second of all, uh, it's the agents that really consume uh, the services on the internet, and that service can be, you know, browsing through the front end, the, the, the website, consuming like some of the data, or even like help human to purchase uh, the, the grocery and book for the hotels and uh, our airlines and all the stuff for them. So uh, with that particular uh, future, then we definitely want one of the agent to be able to do things autonomous, autonomously without human in the loop. However, is because exactly because of this, we need the agent to really be trustworthy and not going completely out of control. So with this in mind, how should we solve the problem? Or what is the key challenges we see nowadays with uh, you know, really enable agent to be autonomous, but also have basic trust and confidence for human to rely on agents. First of all, uh, the agents at the moment, think about human, right? Like think about human in society. How do we have access to bank accounts, to credit cards, to all those stuff? It's because we have an ID. It can be a national ID in Korea. It can be a national ID, ID in US or China. But that's require an ID that's really enabled to prove who you are and the sum of your history, right? You're not a criminal. You have not done something really bad. So that's uh, typical things need to be happen with the agentic internet and the agent need to have their own native ID as well to be able to even like, allow them access for anything. And on top of that, now agent finally is able to actually do something with, uh, you know, like a user-friendly interface starting from this year, especially with uh, the, the, the launch of Manus, really give us a very good example about how human can really use a general purpose agent. But of course, besides general purpose agents, there's a lot of vertical-based, customized uh, agents. But with that, uh, with all those different type of agents, if we want to unleash them and go to the real world to do something without staying just in the sandbox or internal enterprise environment, then most likely the agent probably need to do something in involving the money transaction when there's like two entities exchange value, right? So in this case, agent need a payment solution. And currently what we have is human to really like, you know, using credit cards or ACH, bank transfer and all the stuff. But this is actually not the right way or like the native way for agent to use because of many reasons. One, agents or agentic internet in the future will be very global. Very likely your personal agents, when I, I live in San Francisco, so I use ChatGPT or Perplexity all the time, which most likely those agents are sitting in US. But today I'm here in Seoul, and uh, I actually want to use my agent to really book a hotel for me for this uh, amazing week of uh, KBW. Then in this case, it's very likely that involves two agents that sitting in different countries then this payment actually will become a cross-board global payment, which uh, a lot of times credit card actually, you know, like 
in developed countries, they're okay, but when it's come to, you know, like especially de under developed countries, then that's what we'll have a lot of troubles, uh, 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 easily get declined. And also like actually the cost can be high, especially if we're talking about in the future, agent can also do fractional transactions because, or fractional payments, because there's more than just the, you know, uh, the day-to-day -day payments that human are using agent for it, but also agent can, just access pricing data to help human or you know like uh, everybody uh, sit here to do cryptocurrency trading. So in this case, that payment solution can be actually very uh, or method can be very fractional, which again, a lot of the existing solutions can be very expensive. So on top of that, the very important thing to also give human or give you know enterprise the confidence to be able to leverage agent to do stuff is the control or we call it authorization. So we talked about identity, which usually is like the place where you use for authenticate who you are and access something. But again, it's not enough because you also need to have something that's sit on top of that, have a guardrail to say, oh, this agent, especially when you say, for example, book the hotel for me, please don't spend over $1,000 for that week. So in this case, how do you have that level of authorization control? sit on top. So this is giving you an example about how Kite's, uh, we call like the Kai agent passport and the platform works. Users usually give the agents a, uh, uh, when the users are using the agent, the agent have a passport assigned to them, which essentially is a combination of a unique ID and wallet. And uh, the, uh, the governance rail will you know, developers where like users can add a lot of like the rules like spending control limits and all the stuff. So in this case, this is particular uh, example that's future gonna be happening very, you know, like uh, very likely to happen, right? Like the agent one, which we usually call the user agent, will need to interact with uh, the other side of the agent, which we usually call a service agent. But also besides the agent, it can be, uh, you know, like just a services like Uber or like GPU or data. Then with this like a multi agent, multi agent to like services, you know, transfer or transactions, how do you have the agent one be able to access First, access those services. Second, how can you then pay for those services? And third is how they can really not overspend or you know like uh, break the rules that the user set up for the agent one. But on top of that, how do we actually ensure those providers, data provider one, two, GP provider one, two, Uber and agent two are delivering the right high quality services to agent one and ultimately to the user so that's that's called a complete off transaction. Otherwise, it could even involve like a disputes and all those like uh, you know uh, negotiation in the process. Which that's also why we we call this like a contract template, which essentially is uh, the way that ensure the services are delivering some SLA guarantee uh, to the agent. So this is just to give you an example. As a, a user or a consumer, we we probably want to uh, order some like a grocery uh, for uh, your you know for yourself uh, across different. Uh, e-commerce platforms. And uh, here, oh, the user can just uh, say to the shopping agent, for example, say, oh, help me to refill my uh, refrigerator. And then, uh, based on your personal preference and uh, past history, uh, this agent can actually then go to Costco or like Safeway uh, to do that. And the beauty of this is actually the payment solution is down by stable coin, which again, we touched about why we need a native solution that is globally settled in real time with micro capabilities and the low cost, which actually make stable coin and blockchain based solution a perfect fit here. So uh, this is a little bit like, you know, detailed about the flow. So I'm probably gonna skip today. Uh, but this is an interesting one that uh, uh, we can uh, take a look. It looks very similar to the first use case I just mentioned. But the difference here is, you saw in the very beginning, uh, we talked about it's a shopping agent, which is actually a dedicated agent, custom agent, that's built particularly, sorry, for the shopping use case. But the trend here, actually, in at least when we see in Silicon Valley, is a lot of people just use the general purpose agent trying to do stuff for them, using cloud, Anthropic Cloud, ChatGPT, Perplexity, and those, you know, like a 
general purpose agent to be able to do stuff like uh, grocery shopping, you know, uh, travel uh, booking and all the stuff. So that is the place where this is where Kite is also actually available for end used and users to just stay at ChatGPT to say, oh, yeah, again, please help me to find a gift for my wife's birthday or my uh, husband's birthday uh, and make sure it's delivered by next Monday because that birthday, uh, that is the, the birthday day. So in this case, then you can just use the general purpose agent uh, to do that. But of course, we are expecting the future of the agentic internet will have a lot of uh, different type of agents from like those general purpose uh, agents to very personalized assistant agents to actually very dedicated business type of uh, enterprise type of uh, use cases for people come from like the enterprise or like the big companies. So I would imagine now at least a lot of the enterprises customers we talk to, they'll start using like the dedicated agent to do business procurement, for example. Uh, car companies are using agent now or experimenting agent to do like the car manufacturing parts shopping globally for them. And that is, again, actually why they are very ex excited and exploring like the stable coin-based solution, because that's helped them to maneuver like the multi-currency environment. So yeah, this is just a quick walkthrough about how we can really enable this end-to-end uh, -end process with, uh, again, all the, we, if you look at the right side, all those we call like the innovations or like the uh, customization that's built for the agentic identity and payment solutions are actually more or less based on blockchain. Which again, that is why we're so excited this time about a blockchain solution because it's not, a, again, like a fluffy, words just talk about the philosophical and all the stuff, but is, the, is actually providing a real technology for real mainstream uh, solutions or mainstream problems. So uh, this is a little bit off, but as you can see here, uh, underlying we have what we call the Kite AI layer one based uh, blockchain, which is actually customized for agentic transactions and payments with a custom transaction lane, and also like a, you know, like a gasless, almost gasless transactions and everything. And on top of that, what makes this very useful or like friendly to the AI developers is we understand in order for AI developers to really adopt the blockchain-based solution, we have to abstract some of the very crypto and blockchain-specific uh, technology you know, formats and uh, those languages away from them so that they can just use the fami familiar languages or familiar formats uh, to use. So that is where like a Kai platform is actually considered basically an abstraction layer sit on top of our own layer one that is uh, helping the agent developers or like AI developers quickly to uh, integrate uh, our SDK, the passport, and everything on, uh, on into their agent, and also be able to register their services into this uh, agentic network. And on top of that is some technologies or like uh, middleware to enable the transactions. But in the end, uh, on top of that is what we call a uh, agentic ecosystem or agentic marketplace, where on the one side is a lot of like those client agents, on the other side is a lot of agentic services. That's the service can be one, another agent, or it can just be MCP or like a data APIs that they can use for. So this is a network that we are really building across actually the uh, multiple verticals and across like a Web 2 and Web 3. But again, to us, uh, now, nowadays, when we talk about Web 2 and Web 3, it's less about, uh, you know, like a uh, philosophical difference. It's more about the vertical use cases. For example, when we talk about Shopify, then we're, uh, we're more talking about the agentic shopping, agentic commerce use case. But when we are talking about, uh, you know, like integrating with uh, some cryptocurrency DeFi project, then that is usually we're talking about enabling people, enabling agents to really help the end users to do some uh, DeFi trading or like yield optimization options uh, there. So if we go, that is pretty much is, and this is where just a, a quick uh, introduction about myself. Uh, 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 I, I come from more like the data and uh, AI background, 
did my PhD from Berkeley, focused on machine learning before. And uh, before this uh, uh, kite, I used to lead product management at Databricks, which right now is uh, the largest uh, data infrastructure company in the world. And uh, before that, uh, I was a founding member of uh, AI companies. And most of the team come from the intersection of the AI and blockchain industry, which, again, that's why we felt like this is the true uh, real combination that is solving a very big and uh, promising future problems. Yeah, that's it. Thank you.